All right, welcome to Geometry 5-1. Uh, here we're studying the law of sines. Um, and before, we've looked at some basic trigonomic um, ratios within sine, cosine, and tangent of right triangles. And then now we're going to be looking at the law of sines and in the next video, the law of cosines um, for non-right triangles. And so this is all the other types of triangles. They don't necessarily have to have 90 degrees. And the first thing that we're looking at is the law of sines. Um, and what we have explored so far was that there's some relationship between how big an angle is um, and then its opposing side, right? Because we were looking at how much this angle opens is going to determine how big this is. We just need some type of relationship between how big these sides are to know when this side gets cut off. And that's uh, what the line of sines is, law of sines is going to formalize. Uh, and so basically what this says is the relationship, the ratio between how big the angle, or the sine of angle A is, divided by the length of side A, uh, will be the same as the ratio between the sine of angle B and angle B side within a triangle is also the same thing with C. Uh, the, the ratio between the sine of angle C and the side of angle C. Um, and just to show you, uh, we're looking at uh, an example here. We're at 523 in the example. Um, so it's given us a triangle, and in this triangle, we have our th three angles and our three sides. Uh, and what we know is that angle A is 48 degrees, and angle B is 93 degrees. Um, and we know one side, which is the side B, uh, which is 15. So the first thing we need to do is just set up uh, a ratio here. So let me um, pick a new color. So we know that the sine of B, so that's going to be the sine of 93 degrees over 15, which is our length, should be equal to, um, and we're looking for the sine of A, which is 48 degrees, over, and this is what we're trying to find, right? This is our unknown, is, um, oh, I'm sorry, the problem asks, uh, what is the length of BC, which is side A, right? It's the opposite, it's opposite of side A. So that's what we're looking for. Um, I'm kind of running out of space here, but using um, cross products property, we could write an equation that says 15 times the sine of 48 equals our missing side, A, times the sine of 93. We'll divide both sides by the sine of 93. And just for space here, this is uh, 1, so we can erase this. Okay. Uh, and here's what we're left with. So to find the missing side, uh, and this I'm just going to punch in on a calculator, uh, 15 times the sine of 48, and this is equal to um, approximately 11.147. And I would just keep this on your calculator, and I'm going to divide that by the sine of 93. And what I end up with um, what this ends up equals is about 11.16. Uh, so the length of BC, or side A in our triangle, is 11.16. Uh, so it's pretty easy. Again, all we're doing is uh, we have three pieces of information here, two angles and a side. And so we're going to fill it in based off our, our um, law of sines, and then we're going to solve for a missing side. So in this case, we solved for a missing side, uh, BC, and we got that its the length would be 11.16. All right, let's look at how else we could apply this law of sines. <clears throat> the other way to apply the law of sines is to find a missing angle. And the first problem we're looking at finding a missing side. Uh, this problem is going to start off the same way uh, by creating um, an equation. So we know that using the law of sines. So the sine of 120 over 18 will equal the sine of, we'll just call this side S, over 11. So this is what we're trying to find, sorry. We'll call 
this. Sorry, angle S, not side S. I should have labeled, um, we'll call this SRT. Okay, so sorry, the question was find angle S. Find the measure of angle S. So again, the sine of 120 over 18 equals the sine of, we don't know, over 11. So just like the last problem, we're going to use cross products to write our equation, cross product property. And we're going to have, um, I'll write this up here, 11 times the sine of 120 equals 18 times the sine of angle S, which we don't know. Um, and you could see, well, we'll just keep moving along here. I'm going to divide both sides by 18, division property of equality. So we have 11 over the sine of 120 over 18 equals the sine of our missing side, or angle here, S. Now, moving forward, um, let's, let's go ahead and just compute using our calculator what this equals to, and then we'll, I'll show you how to f solve for the missing angle here. Um, so uh, I'm doing it in my calculator. 11 times the sine of 120 divided by 18, and you get, um, I'm not going to write the whole thing out, but I'll keep it on my calculator so the, all the digits remain intact. Um, now, in order to do this, we actually need to use the inverse to find the measure of sine of angle S. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, I'm going to do the inverse of sine 1. So on my calculator, um, it, it's times this, what's going in here is this. Now, I'm using on my calculator, because I've already computed what this is, and I have this, is my, it's called in my calculator, it's my answer. And so I'm, I'm going to put an answer, which is going to recall this from my last, from the last problem that I did in my calculator. So I'm pushing second, then answer, uh, and that's, this answer now is doing all this work. So I'm going to get this exact thing. Um, you press enter, and you can see that it equals 31.95, so we'll round this up and say it's 32 degrees approximately. Um, so good. Again, so this is how to find a missing angle. So um, set up your, your ratios, use the um, property of cross products to get your equation, uh, and then when you're solving for your equation, eventually to find an angle, you're going to have to use the inverse of sine. So the inverse of sine based off all this, and you'll get your 32 degrees. All right, good luck in the rest of the problems, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.